post physique. Greetings, true friends. I have first and foremost written a little article on my thegoldenone.se page, which you can check out below. It's mainly about the latest Legio Gloria releases, but um, you know, I like writing articles every once in a while, and I'm trying to drive traffic to the page. So um, yeah, check it out if you want. So basically, I will try to respond to all of the questions. So each question will be a bit shorter in the answer, but uh, that way I can at least get through them all. So first and foremost, from Jack, when it comes to genes, do you believe it's better to embrace your genetics to their true potential? For example, a guy with a lanky frame training to be shredded and a guy with a stockier frame training to be yoked. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, it will ultimately be dependent upon your genetics anyway, but the main rules for everyone is to continuously get better at whatever you do. And it also depends on what sort of possibilities you have in terms of training. Perhaps one guy doesn't really have access to a good gym, but he has a good access to a um, Thai boxing club nearby, and he likes Thai boxing more, and he gets better at Thai boxing than he would from lifting. Yeah, of course, then he can go into um, the Thai boxing place. Other guys, and this is of course more common, they don't have access to a martial arts club they like, but they have access to um, a gym. So they're, so therefore they um, go into progressing the main exercises in uh, the gym. Then some other guy might be you know, more inclined to do parkour or something like that, you know, a, a bit lighter guy. Uh, he focuses on um, calisthenics, etc. Then you have, you know, a stockier guy who wants to go into powerlifting or strongman. So I would say you will eventually gravitate towards the thing you get the most results from. But main point and main point of the philosophy of taking the glory spill is to get better continuously. Then what you get better at is, of course, up to you what you like, what you uh, see the most results in. But, you know, getting that confidence from continuous improvement that is what we're about so i don't necessarily want everyone to look exactly the same way i just want you to be the best version of yourself you can be and uh, you know get that joy happiness and confidence from the continuous progression from chris when can we expect the launch of jutonem nutrition in germany also have you ever gone hunting or have you considered getting a hunter's license uh, hopefully it will be for my birthday so uh, in um, in uh, 10 days actually so on the 31st of july i aim to open the web shop for germany and uh, the rest of europe and i will keep you updated on it in regards to hunting license that was on my to-do list but for this year but then um, nurgle sent uh, the covid pandemic and cancelled everything so i'll have to postpone it but it's definitely in my um in the future plans to get a hunter's license from Alex, will you be continuing your history videos? Yes, I will most definitely. I have at least two cool enough videos, I suppose. One Viking Age and then one medieval type video uh, incoming. So um, yeah, they are not... Uh, the series is still alive, but as I said before in a recent video, I've had a little um, period of lower intensity here on YouTube, but uh, more will come, I assure you. Then a question regarding music, which I responded to in a private message as well, but it's in regards to music and how music can help the greater struggle to revive Europe. And of course, music is hugely important. Uh, music is a great way to, um, you know, elaborate on a political message in a uh, more digestible way so to speak i write more about this in dauntless for anyone who's interested but yes definitely the more music on our side the better then from ron what's your opinion on creatine yeah it's one of these supplements i recommend to basically everyone who trains martial arts or in the gym you know plenty of evidence behind it and it's been a popular supplement for decades for a reason because it works it's not magic but it's definitely something i recommend that you should take. I take it myself, use a teaspoon a day, swallow it directly with some water. I don't use any load up face, but um, because it messes up your... Um, you need to go to the bathroom quite often, it's uh, not so pleasant. So yeah, just take one um, teaspoon a day. And uh, I use creatine monohydrate because yeah, most studies behind it. So from my man Joseph, 
Will there be a return to the Legio Celtica shirt? And when did you get the idea to start Legio Gloria? An origin story or something is what I would find interesting. Yeah, so basically, first and foremost, yes, the Legio Celtica will be back. I don't know on what sort of garment, but we have a cool design for it at least. So uh, that will be um, incoming sometime during the autumn. In regards to the origin story, I've always had an interest in style, aesthetics, um, and also clothing. And it was a quite natural step for me to take uh, to create a clothing brand because ultimately I want to... I'm quite picky when it comes to most things, supplements, food, uh, clothing, what I wear. Uh, so if I can determine that myself, so I don't need to you know, have some thing made in China by a slave laborer or something. Uh, of course, I want to take the opportunity to be the captain of my own ship, you know, provide good clothes for myself and then to all supporters as well. So it was always in the pipeline ever since yeah, a long time ago. So it, it was always in the back of my mind to someday do it, then an opportunity presented itself and uh, yeah, I took it from there. So uh, yeah, and it's been a, a hell of a journey, a glorious journey indeed. Um, come quite far, I'd say, and we have, you know, uh, good launches still to come. So um, good times, good times. And uh, again, thank you to everyone who has uh, purchased anything. It allows me to continue to develop things, making it uh, bigger and better. Then we have a question from Rafael from uh, Brazil, who is of Polish and uh, German ancestry and um, is from the south of Brazil. And uh, you have a larger German population, European population there, uh, and they still have more European traditions than the rest of Brazil. And since they have, the, and since they have those traditions, they get criticized from other Brazilians that they are that they are LARPing as Europeans or that they are uh, ashamed to be Brazilian etc and then Rafael wonder what um, my question is since I was born and live in a nation different than the nations which my ancestors came am I wrong to identify with and celebrate their culture and traditions you know if I was from Polish and German uh, descent or uh, you know I'd come to Brazil later than the original settlers I probably too would celebrate more the German ancestry the German traditions Oktoberfest everything like that I don't see why you would necessarily want to uh, go up in the mainstream Brazilian culture it's not a uh, you know, if you compare Polish and German culture to Brazilian culture, uh, yeah, it's probably a better culture, a culture that is more in tune with your nature if you're still, uh, well, the majority uh, of your ancestors are from Europe. So I don't think there is anything wrong with it. And ultimately, if you can choose between two cultures, choose the one that is A, more congruent with your soul, uh, and B, the one you like more, uh, the one you feel more comfortable with. So I don't see anything wrong with uh, clinging to European tradition at all. From Ozarker. Greetings, the golden one. Checking in from a scenic mountain road. I was wondering what you thought of building physical spaces as well as political infrastructure in order to promote the welfare of our nations and our countrymen. I know many are against this because feds and the risk of infiltration, especially in the US. However, these spaces could just be invite-only gyms, your friend's barbershop, etc. Very innocent on the surface and simply allow like-minded men to meet. Yeah, I'm definitely for this. Um, you know, we have in Sweden the House of Swedes. We can have uh, gatherings, we can have events there without being cancelled, etc. And it's all in the open anyway. It's not We're not discussing anything illegal. Um, and that's ultimately the the best way to ensure you don't get into trouble. Don't plan anything illegal, don't say anything illegal. Uh, then it doesn't matter if you have a Fed there or something. Because what what will you do if you only talk about Roman history uh, or European traditions? I mean, it, they can't really do anything. What they want is for you to say something that they can then take you for. So they might throw out like, oh, we should totally do this to that minority group. And then they gauge, okay, who, what guys says, yeah, we should do it. And what guys say, you know what, this is not uh, the rhetoric we use at all. This is not what we're about. 
So be more mindful of the actual people you are surrounding yourself with. Um, so I'd say physical spaces are important. If you're against it, it's better to just set the tone, set the social, you know, how you talk to each other, set a high standard so you don't let any uh, loser nationalist come in and have a bad tone, which which will get you all into trouble. So I'd say if you're afraid of feds, etc., it's more important to, you know, distance yourself from uh, dodgy individuals and there are a lot of dodgy individuals who are attracted to um, you know right-wing ideals etc that's why we need to post physique so you know you know they are legit from theo greetings golden one do you recommend using belts in the gym for novices if so at what weight approximately would you recommend it thank you for the wisdom no i would say that you should train without the belt for as long as possible then you will probably get to a stage when you do squats and deadlifts where you can feel on the lower back that it would be a good insurance to have a belt. Uh, so that is my advice. When to start using it, it will be up to you. You can feel it. Um, when you get to a point where you say better safe than sorry, then it can be a good idea. But try to do it for as um, try to do it without a belt for as long as possible. From Matthew, Great Lion, what are your thoughts on H.P. Lovecraft? I don't know because I haven't read anything from him, but I intend to do so. There's a cool compilation book called the Necronomicum, uh, which looks absolutely epic, so I might read that someday. I've heard good things about him. I've heard good things about him, so um, yeah, it's definitely on my to-read list at some stage. From Sven, Hello, Lion of Sverige. What advice do you have for young single Vikings who want a, a wife? Well, I sort of responded to that in the previous video on how to optimize your chances of getting a um, wife. But basically, the absolutely first thing everyone, every young Viking has to think about is to build yourself up uh, and from a good position of... Um, you know, attractiveness, then you can start looking for a wife. So you don't start looking for a wife the first thing you do. But the first thing you do is to look yourself in the mirror and say, am I an attractive match for a good woman? So, uh, but yeah, you can check out the former video I made. From my man Helvetic John, greetings high elf. I know that my present question is a wide topic and I will try to keep it short. Over the years, I noticed that most right-wing and nationalist people which I personally endorse, do believe that man-induced climate warning is a scam. However, an overwhelming majority of the experts and scientists in that field, disclaimer, I am also working as a scientist in a close topic, highlight the actual negative impact of mankind on the climate with data which are hard to deny. Note that I'm not blaming anyone for forging his own opinion, I'm just trying to understand that this split in opinion and I would be highly interested in your thoughts about this global skepticism. Keep up the great work. Well, I would say that a lot of right-wing people, especially in America, you know, these conservatives, they see leftists having one position, then they take the opposite position just for the sake of it. Sort of same thing in Europe, but we do have a, a longer tradition, at least in Europe, for actual nationalists to also be quite close to environmental issues. The difference is that how the leftists are doing it or how the globalists are doing it, they are only pointing to certain things. White middle class and working class men are driving cars and that is you know, causing carbon dioxide emissions, so therefore they can't drive any cars. Uh, they have no problem importing, you know, food, quinoa from South America or cheap products from China that, you know, pollutes uh, much more. Uh, so it's more how they are approaching the problem that I, you know, take issue with. But if you're being honest with it, uh, it's a completely different question. So what I would say is that the left takes a problem from air, boom, and then places the blame on their usual suspects, which are, you know, guys like us, you know, regular guys just trying to make ends meet um, instead of placing it on themselves. You know, some of them are vegans, so they import food from halfway across the world, not particularly good in terms of, um, 
CO2 emissions etc. Then also of course they import a lot of products from cheap labor in China and you have China also polluting a lot of rivers etc. Um, so I would say that the reluctance of certain right-wing individuals it comes from acknowledging that the leftists have a point. Now of course as far as I see it I have you know promoted a more local, a more sustainable economy for quite some time, especially when it comes to food. But also the powers to be, they use the climate hysteria for their own purposes, which is to tax and uh, reduce the power of white middle class and working class. That's my take on it at least. From Jacob, greetings golden one. How do you recommend meeting people who share your ideas on European biodiversity in an environment that is outwardly hostile and malicious to the thought of it. For context, I work and live in a tech area of the new world and any pro-European ideals could cost me my career. While I work towards financial independence and self-employment, I'd like advice on how to know where to meet pro-European people and how to confirm they are trustworthy. I think a lot of guys are a bit too paranoid when it comes to people. Again, if we're talking about this paranoia, most individuals aren't you know, malicious informers who will tell your boss if you have said that you like European, the beauty of European women, or you think that white lives matter. Most people, normal, regular people that, you know, you know, you can sense on them that they're decent individuals. It's quite easy to figure out if someone is a wreck or if someone is a decent individual. Yeah, they won't inform on you to the authorities or they won't inform on you to your boss, etc. Now, of course, you don't need to say anything controversial uh, when you meet someone. You can just gauge, okay, what sort of interest does this individual have? And usually when you meet other guys, you can probably sense what sort of individuals they are. Do they like training? Do they like history? Do they like art? Do they like beauty? Do they like to be out in nature? Yeah, they're probably on our side. Um, so, you know, you can gauge how a person is in his views just by talking to him about his interests. That is my experience at least. Then, of course, you don't need to be 100% uh, aligned in terms of ideology. You know, that can come later. So don't think so much about the purely political. I'd say focus more on the personality aspects of it. So, yeah, I don't know if that was much of an answer. It's one of these questions that very hard to respond to uh, because of everyone is in a different situation. But uh, as with all things, just present yourself in a wholesome and good manner and uh, then you will probably attract uh, similar people. From my man Peyton. Greetings, Golden One. I was wondering what advice or sources you may have for those wishing to pursue lifting coaching. Of course, experience is a part of this, but if you have any recommended readings for coaching knowledge, it would be useful. I wish to one day do my part in training our brothers. That is an absolutely saluted and worthy motivation. Uh, first and foremost, experience is uh, the key to all enlightenment, I would say, or to most enlightenment. So what you should do is, for yourself, train as many different setups, uh, schedules, programs as possible, take notes, uh, what worked, what worked with what other program, what worked during a bulk, what worked during a cut, how did your body respond, then if you have a good friend or someone you can you know, coach for free, to try things out on, it's absolutely perfect. Then of course also it comes down to experience with your own um, uh, later on clients. Uh, for me personally, I like to follow up if it's a uh, training schedule or something like that, so you sort of get feedback on it. Then also I would recommend that you go to different places, perhaps different gyms, a strongman gym or a powerlifting gym or something, get some pointers from the people there. Even if you know that you have the basics all set for yourself, it never hurts to get some insights in how they explain things because then you might say, okay, this made me really understand how to properly set up a squat position, so therefore I can teach my own clients this. So the more knowledge you gain, and also think of it in the sense that you're not only gaining knowledge for yourself, but you're using the knowledge onto others. In regards to readings, except for my own book Dauntless, I don't really have any particular 
to read lists, but you know there are so many resources on the internet, you know, blogs, YouTube videos, uh, pages, etc. So read and read more, and also something to read up on. You know, sports specific training. Some guys they train MMA, Thai boxing. Then they want to focus on different things in the gym. Other guys are only out for you know building as much muscle as possible. Some guys are out for only getting strong in. I might make a separate video on it later on. From Thomas, have you ever tried your hand at calisthenics? I've been working on my front lever and planche, but these are probably the most difficult workouts I've ever tried. Only those with the tightest physique can hold this, so I was curious if you could do if you could do it. I haven't actually tried those. I might do it. Thanks for reminding me, and I will post it to Instagram or to a Games Kitchen video or something. But I've done plenty of chins and dips over the years at least, because they're so accessible. From Shane, what do you think of Parler? Will you be creating an account? I have created an account, but I probably won't post so much there, because as I've seen, now it's populated mostly by semi-dodgy Trump people. Um, I'm not all too much aboard on uh, what they're doing. You know, we used to call them alt-light. Not the most trustworthy of individuals, so I don't think I'll be posting much there. But who knows? Hopefully it will be a good platform anyway. From my man Paul Clark, other than myself, naturally. Who is your favorite historical Anglo and why? Um, yes, indeed. Uh, favorite historical Anglo? Tough question. A lot of glorious men from uh, Albion, definitely. I would probably go with Alfred the Great just because the you know the foundation of England um, he of course fought uh, the Vikings quite a bit but if I had been English myself I'd probably say Alfred the Great and is someone I can respect in terms of you know building um, a nation from Puya Gupta Muhammad thoughts on black on white violence in America yeah, absolutely horrible situation, absolute nightmare for uh, a lot of white people in America. Uh, needs to stop. Uh, I can't really say too much about it here on YouTube, but it is a problem. It's a huge problem. Uh, Trump doesn't really seem to care all too much about it, but a uh, horrible situation. And for any American, just get a gun so you can protect yourself and your family. From Patrick, do you plan on introducing any mewing slash jaw exercise to your child in the future? And the importance and the importance of nose breathing to ensure proper jaw and skull development. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely indeed. Uh, it comes down to good nutrition uh, first and foremost. You know, good traditional nutrition. So we're trying to keep a um, strict policy of no sugar to start with, and then just feeding uh, our daughter and coming children, of course, good solid traditional food. A lot of meat, a lot of fat a lot of these sort of things and then of course if she or her siblings for whatever reason would breathe through their mouth unless they're exercising we would tell them to you know proper nose breathing so yes definitely something I uh, am keeping in mind from Sora what do you think of the situation with China and Hong Kong yeah I'd say if I was living in Hong Kong, I would probably not want to be subject to the Chinese regime. So, of course, I'm all for uh, you know, Hong Kong liberty. Can it go back to Britain? All the better. You know, I'm not a fan of the British regime either. It's not the freest or most glorious. But if I got to choose between uh, Britain and uh, China, I'd probably choose uh, Britain, at least if I lived in, um, in Hong Kong. Uh, so yes, I'm, I'm all for it and I genuinely feel sympathy for uh, the people in Hong Kong who are uh, struggling for freedom. From Ryan, hello golden one, what are your thoughts about pre-workout supplements such as C4 for example? Do they work? Are they worth it? And if so, should you take it before every workout? Well of course I do have my own beloved Varlsbrygd which um, all Swedish guys love, I'm sure if you haven't tried it. Um, you will probably love it, I can't say too much uh, for everyone, but uh, keep in mind, and this is my recommendation for all pre-workouts, they contain a lot of caffeine, 
if you take them too late in the day, it might interfere with your sleep and sleep is more important than caffeine for uh, long term performance. So if you should take them every day, no, not really. I take Varles Brygd every once in a while, a few times a week maybe, uh, because it's so damn nice. It's just a thing that increases the quality of my life. But in terms of needing it for optimal gains, no, you absolutely do not. You need a good diet, you need a good sleep, and you need to continuously progress in the temple. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for anyone who is uh, tight on cash or someone who trains late in the day. If you have the opportunity to train earlier in the day uh, and money is not a problem, yeah, definitely it can be a good idea. But I sell it myself, but I say to everyone, it's not something you need for ultimate uh, performance. Then you can go with creatine, it's much cheaper and uh, you know actually does something for the long-term results. From David, how are you ensuring your child is growing up with wholesome values and isn't consumed by degenerate media, etc.? Do you have any other thoughts on how to raise a child in the modern era? A very good question and something I will probably make a separate video on later on. But basically, my wife and I, of course, both are setting good examples for the children by being wholesome ourselves. Um, you know, keeping a good clean diet, not partaking in any questionable behavior. Then also, of course, having good friends with families and children themselves and we are on the same page of what is good for children to do what is not good so the social setting is absolutely everything so make sure if you have friends yourself ensure that you are on the same page when it comes to raising children so i've said to all of my mates who um you know will have children or um, already have children that you know no sugar whatsoever because it's bad same thing when they get older, you're not supposed to spend time with these individuals, for example. And if it comes to a stage when a school starts doing questionable things, you know, indoctrination of unwholesome values, I will go into the school and talk to the teachers. Maybe I can get with me some other fathers to do the same. So main point, create a community of like-minded men uh, and you're on the same page when it comes to certain things when it comes to your children. From FIPS. How much muscle did you gain from lifting? I don't exactly know, but maybe 15 kilos or something like that. From my man Eshano, do you think somatotypes are real? Mesomorph, ectomorph, endomorph, and if so, which one do you think you are? They are real to a certain extent, but it's not something I think anyone should dwell upon. You know, you have lanky guys, you have stocky guys, you have athletic guys, and everything in between. I don't think it's useful to um, to identify as anything because the rules of lifting and diet is the same anyway. You need to get your bench press up, you need to get your military press up, you need to get stronger in your deadlift, you need to eat enough to ensure progression. So it doesn't really matter what sort of somatotype you are. Uh, the rules of lifting and gaining muscle are the same anyway, who, whomever you are. From Gregor. There is low reps for strength and higher reps for hypertrophy, at least for most people. In what rep range do you train for mass gain? For myself and for clients and uh, as a right and dauntless as well, you know, you should do both. You should train both in the lower rep range and in the higher. So I usually split. So I have one day for clients. This is one day is heavier. So bench press four repetitions, four sets, then the other day bench press four uh, sets of 10 repetitions, for example. So you work the progression in both uh, ends of the um, of the rep range. So I would say for optimal muscle mass, for a natural at least, you should train both in the lower and the higher rep range. From Spencer, how active are you in a given day and what do you eat to maintain a body with such legality? Um, so at the moment I am training for maybe 45 minutes, then I go for a power walk in the forest, listening to some podcasts. Uh, I'm trying to train quite hard now, uh, not only for aesthetics, but also for the highest and greatest purpose, uh, which I will elaborate on later on, but uh, I'm trying to optimize my health as much as possible, both in terms of training and in, 
in terms of uh, nutrition. In regards to the nutrition, it is I will make some sort of um, more full day of eating videos for the Physique Manufactorum, so it's easier to show than to tell, so stay tuned for that. Then from David, again, what supplements do you use? Creatine, magnesium, zinc, etc. I will make a separate video on this later on. Um, zinc, magnesium every once in a while, creatine every day of course, fish oil and vitamin D depending on the weather, and of course it's summer so I don't take vitamin D. Uh, then I've also experimented a bit with glycine, which is uh, some good stuff. Amino acids also before training, but I'll make a separate video on it later on. From Dylan, thoughts on animal stacks. I've heard from many that it's a sort of legal steroid and was curious if you have ever used them and if so, how well did they work? I have no idea about it, so I can't really comment. I will have to read up on it. It's not something I've ever used, so... Um, I don't know. Moving on to subscribe star from Boom Golden One. As someone who treasures tradition, what is your opinion about the revival of the beautiful traditional Latin mass that is happening in Poland, Italy, Slovakia, France, US, etc.? Um, again, I have to betray my ignorance. I have never attended one, so I can't really say all too much about it, but if it's beautiful and if it inspires greatness, I suppose it's a good thing. But yeah, I can't really say too much. From Greg, how has the Free Sweden project been getting on during the COVID-19? Well, we can't have gatherings over with more than 50 people, so we haven't really had any good, um, any good events. But the renovation of the house is going absolutely brilliantly. Massive shout out and salute to everyone who's working on it. So the the organization is going full steam ahead. Uh, but in terms of um, events, etc., we haven't really had any. But uh, I'm looking forward to when uh, the COVID is over so we can get back to having good events. It will be really fun. Always nice to be there. From Alexander. Greetings. As a young man still figuring out my career, what is your take on what is a good opportunity? option to keep oneself economically afloat either long term or short term is entrepreneurship working for is entrepreneurship working for a company or freelance any options you recommend uh, too hard to say it depends on where you are in life it depends on if you have any special quality that might you know lend itself well to being your own man but otherwise i would say for a younger guy it might be good to get an employment and then you have a side a side hustle or um, you know use the time you um, are not working for someone else to develop uh, something that you might turn into a career yourself but staying afloat you of course need maybe some sort of employment um, at first while you develop your, your side business from the Dacian what did you do after the army I went straight into university actually so um, Army ended in uh, December and in uh, January I started my first course. Final question from my man Bryce. I'm having a son in a couple of months. Any tips for couples on remaining patient with each other? First and foremost, massive congratulations. Highly joyous to hear. In regards to advice on staying patient, as long as you know that it will be a trying period and if you actively think of staying more patient, um, especially if you have a poor sleep, you know, you tend to be a bit more on edge, etc. But if you practice some stoicism and actively tell yourself that now it's extra important that I'm extra patient with my wife because she has probably slept even poorer than I have and it's not easy for her because she will probably be a lot more stressed than you are because you know how women are. Um, and you know, you try to be extra supportive and keeping those things in mind will probably make it easier for you to be a bit more helpful, a bit more patient as well. So practice some stoicism and I'm sure all will turn out well. So those were all the questions. I hope they were good answers. In retrospect, I probably should have just picked a few questions and given more precise answers. But I hope it was a good video anyway. So thank you for your support and thank you for watching XXO. Boom! Thank <laughs> you.